What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? Come on into the Rooted and in Progress Stream Center. We are live here on this glorious, magnificent yes. Thursday. How you feeling today, Terrence? Hey, I'm a feel amazing, Yana. And we're here. We're back. Another episode bringing you um, here in our WFLA Now studios. Yes. If you haven't already, make sure you follow Rooted in Progress on all social media platforms. Come on, shout out to Lola. We're on all social media platforms, including TikTok. Yep, yep, yep. So make sure you <laughs> Lola. <laughs> wherever make sure wherever you... Lola is. <laughs> make sure you add yes. us. We are here live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Um, and make sure you uh, follow us on Spotify, on YouTube, and on Apple Podcasts. Terrence, I am so excited about this episode. Not only are we talking about Amazing things happening in St. Pete, no matter how you feel about it, but but the growth. And, and we're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the great, yes. uh, and, yes. and the fun things that are coming in St. Pete. But we have somebody whose birthday, we got <laughs> yes. somebody, he, he is an amazing and incredible man right. sitting right here next to us. Guys, we just found this out. <laughs> I, I, I Breaking wish we, news. I wish wow, we'd have known this before. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes ago, we would have really set it out. So, uh, breaking news. No, fur without further ado, how about you go ahead and dive into who our special guest is today, Deanne? Let's give it up for the birthday boy himself. We got St. Petersburg Mayor Ken <laughs> Welch in the building. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> give it up for Mayor Welch. We are so excited to have you here good, today. Good morning. It's, it's great to be with you here this morning. <laughs> we appreciate it. We were joking about how it's been a couple of years and you have always been uh, supportive. Um, of any platform that we've had here, mm -hmm. uh, schedules come in the way, but he made it a point yeah. to show up on yeah. his birthday. So we have to yes. give you the credit and the honor because it's a big birthday for you too. So it how is. are you feeling today? I'm feeling blessed and highly favored. Yeah. And uh, it's a pleasure. We had to make it happen today. So even though it's a birthday, this is part of the work. So I'm, yeah. I'm thrilled to be here. I mean, you have been doing incredible work. I mean, all of the folks joining us, we we put out like, hey, we are going to have Mayor Welch. So many people have questions. So many people are excited. Uh, they're involved with what's going on in St. Mm -hmm. Pete. And so I, I kind of just want to start this thing off by saying since you ran for mayor, you had a lot of things on your agenda. Um, yeah. How do you feel like how do you think you've been doing so far in this role as mayor, you know, I, I think we've been very successful. Yeah. Um, by focusing on the work, um, mm. um, one of my mentors used to say, "Keep the main thing the main thing." Mm. And so there've been a lot of distractions. I came in uh, under COVID. In fact, I had yep. to be sworn in remotely. Yeah. <laughs> because I had COVID <laughs> on mm. the day I was sworn in, and so we we dealt with that. We dealt with a couple of hurricanes the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and on top of everything else that we're dealing with, we're trying to bring this almost a 50-year um, issue uh, of the historic gas plant in St. Petersburg uh, to a successful conclusion that actually honored the promises that were made to that community. Now, I'm 60 today. There we go. All right. I was <laughs> a sophomore at Lakewood High School when this started in 78. My goodness. So that's how long it's been mm -hmm. since 1978 when the Declaration of Blight was made by the St. Pete City Council yeah. until today. And we finally have a set of agreements, partnerships, funding to not only redevelop that, those 86 acres, but to do it in a way that honors that, those promises that were made of economic inclusion and opportunity for the entire community and especially for the black community that was asked to give up so much yeah. um, back in 78. And so uh, to have that completed through partnership um, with Pinellas County, with the Heinz Rays Group, we had support throughout Tampa Bay, including Mayor Castor yeah. uh, and uh, Mayor um, Bruce from uh, Clearwater, but Bruce Rector both wrote uh, letters of support and op-ed for this. And so I think when you stand on... <laughs> stand on business? <laughs> that's, stand a on business. that's a good term. That's a good term. When you stand on facts evidence you know the promises were made um and you bring people together to have a conversation about how the entire community can move forward you still can be successful even in today's crazy uh, yeah. world of politics and folks uh, you know kind of being on their own team and only worrying about their own team's interests we can come together and make this happen that's what i'm really excited about and so now we've got those agreements signed we've got mm -hmm. a couple of 
more technical things we need to do with the bonding and financing. But we're looking to turn uh, dirt next year. Yeah. And what we're now focusing on is how do we get the, that workforce uh, training model in place so folks can get trained up for these jobs that are coming, 30,000 jobs over the next 20 years in construction, the professional jobs that follow that. And so we want to focus on getting folks into those jobs, getting the $50 million in community benefits that are part of this package, including $15 million for affordable housing, the Woodson Museum, all those things. Right. Getting folks lined up to participate in that economic inclusion that's coming. So you mentioned you were 17 at the time, right? When was, this happened? So I was a sophomore. Oh, you uh, were a sophomore in high school. At Lakewood. I wow. skipped kindergarten. It's, it's the, the, the math is funny. Okay. So it was 78. I was born okay. in 64, so I was 14. Okay, so you were 14, 14. years old. Right. Did that young Ken Welch imagine <laughs> that you would be in this position that you are in today when all of that went down? Look, uh, you can't make up some of these things. I yeah. mean, um, I think we all have a purpose mm -hmm. from the day we're born and before we're born. But I actually grew up in the gas plant area. My grandfather had a wood business, and, and folks in St. Peter have heard this a thousand times because I talked about it. Uh, during the campaign, but it was right at 16th uh, Street and 5th Avenue. Uh, successful wood yard, all the boys in the family worked there, learned how to okay. swing an ax, deliver. And he had to move his business when the interstate came in. Mm -hmm. and, and this story has been replicated throughout the United States where the interstate has disrupted black communities, and that's happened all over. Yeah, it has. A few years later was the, um, at that point it was, um, not called the um, Tropicana Field, but the whole historic gas plant district of around 1,000 uh, people, churches, homes, uh, businesses were asked to move. Yep. And the goal then was economic um, growth, jobs, light industry. Baseball wasn't in the picture at that point. Mm. Years later, baseball became the focus, and that evolved into the Florida Suncoast Dome. Hockey played over there for a while. The mm -hmm. Lightning played there. And eventually, you know, we were able to get a major league baseball team. But having grown up in that, in that area, mm -hmm. our church, Prayer Tower Church of God in Christ, I grew up Kojic, uh, was a church in the area. We had just funded a whole education wing, mm -hmm. uh, no mortgage on it, you know, wow. paid for. And then we were told we had to move. And so the first question was, why is the African-American community being asked once again, after the interstate, to sacrifice uh, in the name of progress? And so that was a long fight, and I watched that up close, not only through my church, but what had happened to my grandfather years before that. And a few years later, my father was elected to the St. Pete City Council in 1981, and that's when I was a senior in high school. So I watched all of this up front, and I watched the struggles. There was a struggle by a lot of our leaders, uh, like Morris Milton, Doug Jamerson, famous names, who fought to make sure folks that owned their homes got fair value for their homes. They didn't have to move out and get a new mortgage. Same thing with the churches, the churches that had to relocate mm -hmm. Prayer Tower, First Baptist, Bethes, Bethel Metropolitan. And so I watched that process up close. And when we got to this point, where some folks wanted to say, look, this is a blank slate of 86 acres. We can do whatever we want to do. My answer is no, it's not a blank slate. That was a community and we have to honor the promises that were made to that community. Um, you know, those promises are just as valid today as they were back in 1978. And that was our approach going in. Wow. And that's incredible to know that you aren't just standing at the forefront of this as the mayor of St. Petersburg. You've lived through this. You've lived mm -hmm. through it. You've seen it. Um, obviously, that means you have heard, seen, read all of the contradicting and the different views. We actually mm -hmm. have um, some sound from people in the community where people have been for this project, people mm -hmm. who have been against this project. So let's listen in and see what um, some folks actually sure. have said. I, I believe this project uh, is vitally important to the city of St. Petersburg. When they consider the facts and look hard at what matters to people in the city, that they will say no, not to say no to baseball, but to say no to this transaction and that it has to be renegotiated. So this is definitely something that, my goodness, even just me as a journalist covering it, 
you've seen, you've heard, there have been out, there have been protests, there have been a lot of things, and a lot of people just have a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, so we definitely wanted to open this platform, hear from people in our community. We have questions coming in from people in the community about what has happened, what's going to happen. Um, we're looking at a question from Cheryl Thompson on Facebook who says, I was forced out of my home 41 years ago. The black community was promised so much and we never saw any of it. Why should we believe you now? Well, I also was a part of that community, uh, mm. and our church was was forced out of yeah. the community for compensation. You know, we've had more than 2,000 folks participate in community conversations mm -hmm. uh, that we had before we even issued the RFP in 2022. And we had meetings around the city uh, after hours so folks could come and tell us what they wanted to see from the redevelopment of the gas plant. And, and more than 2,000 folks participated. What um, rose to the top was we want a true uh, commitment to the promises of economic inclusion, right. business opportunity. Housing was a piece of that. Now, the folks that own houses, and I'd you know, love to talk to this person if they want to uh, email me at mayor at stpede.org. Uh, we can set up a conversation. But if you own your home, you mm -hmm. were compensated for that. And that's how a lot of folks moved out west, moved into Lakewood Estates. Mm -hmm. But the folks that owned homes were compensated for those homes. For those homes, yeah. Uh, the other thing is um, there were, I think, four to 500 rental apartments in the area. And those folks had to move out. Yeah. We are, through this uh, agreement, providing 1,250 affordable and workforce units, about half on site, about half off site. Okay. And so we are putting much more in terms of housing back on the ground that, that was ever there. And again, the folks that owned homes in the gas plant were compensated for the value okay. of those homes. So I'd, I'd love to speak to that person individually. On your video, you had a couple of people, and I think that's an interesting dichotomy. Um, there are folks who have uh, earnest uh, concerns about this. And again, we're not asking you to believe any promise. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is a 20 year project. It's gonna be beyond my term in office. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be several mayors, several, several city councils. You always have to hold folks accountable. Yeah. But I would tell folks, look at our track record. I've served as the county commissioner for 20 years before I became mayor. We promised when we created the first CRA ever based on poverty, the largest in Pinellas County that those dollars would go for housing, for job training. That's exactly what it's done and it's brought back this year some $14 million exactly for those purposes. So we've, we've kept our promises. I certainly intend to do the same thing here. But the two people you have is an interesting um, observation. The first is Frank Peterman. Uh, mm -hmm. He is a member of Omega Psi Phi. <laughs> I want to show we that We were going to get to that hat. Uh, we were going to get to Brother that. Peterman. But he was a former city council member, mm -hmm. former state representative. His mom, Peggy Peterman, was an outstanding journalist with the St. Pete Times. He knows the area, grew up in the area, mm -hmm. and he is supportive. And in fact, he supported another group, the Sugar Hill Group, originally. Okay. But in looking at the facts and what this will bring to, to the community, he was speaking in favor at our last hearing. Yeah. The second gentleman is a gentleman that opposed this, came in last minute, mm. um, is now concerned about the gas plant when it's been pavement for 30 years and no one ever talked about it. Mm -hmm. But what they want to do is sell the land for the highest price possible. Mm. And if you sell the land for the highest price possible, what they're going to put on it are high-end condos. You're going to have $2 million condos on that land. You're not going to have the affordable housing. You're not yeah. going to have the job benefit. You're not going to have the community benefits. And so, again, these are folks who are coming in saying that's a blank slate. Mm. Sell it for the highest value. Mm -hmm. And if, by the way, he's never sat down and talked to us about what our plans about are. It. Mm -hmm. it was about the PR and the publicity. Mm -hmm. And so I'm willing to have a conversation with anyone. But when I ran for this office, this is exactly what I told folks I would do. I told them how we would partner, told them that we would focus on equitable, equitable economic advancement through this mm -hmm. project. We're going to back away from equity because we know the history of the historic yeah. gas plant. And that's exactly what we've done. Yeah. How do we when, when we're when we talk about equitable and, w and we talk about affordable, how are we ensuring that it's affordable for your working middle class, that, that teacher who has to go to school every day or that secretary? How are we making sure that the the working middle class isn't excluded from this affordable housing? That, that's exactly our focus. And we've been working on affordable housing for almost two decades here in 2006. Yeah. 
when I was on the county commission, we created the housing trust fund with about $20 million. We've added affordable housing to our penny for Pinellas infrastructure tax mm -hmm. that's been voted in four times. Um, and so we, when we say affordable, it's truly affordable based on the amount of money that you make. Um, and these numbers change often, but say the area median income is about $60,000, I'll mm -hmm. say. We try to set our funding at 80% of that. So 80% of, of 60, 60, 48. Mm -hmm. So if you make $48,000, you don't, should only spend 30% of your income on housing and that's the way the rents are set okay. and we have um, developments that have 80 percent 60 percent 30 percent we just worked on a, a partnership with volunteers for america that just opened that literally has folks that were in pinellas hope the homeless mm -hmm. center that are now moving in that and so they have no income wow. and they're able to move in there and so we are targeting those folks that make average st pete pinellas county salaries yeah. Now, when folks talk about workforce housing, which is what the state has been focused on, mm -hmm. they go all, all the way up to 120, 140 percent. So it's it's more than the average person makes here. But since 2006, we have focused our funding, our efforts on 80 percent AMI and below. Wow, that is incredible, Terrence. Well, I was just going to say and add to that is um, we are in a world where inflation is is sky high today, mm -hmm. and with affordable housing. Is that realistic for those who are born and raised in that community to afford housing there today? And and I just, you know, we, we know how Tampa, we know how St. Pete area is. It's growing. It's one of the fastest growing um, cities in the country. So is, is that realistic, Mayor? Well, we are battling a couple of things. Uh, first of all, our salaries have been lower than the right. rest of the nation historically. Mm -hmm. And post COVID folks are moving here and they're driving up right. what is affordable. Yes, so if somebody exactly. moves here from Texas or New York or California, they can afford more than someone who's here, maybe doing the same job because our salaries are lower. And so it's driven up the cost of housing, but the salaries here in St. Pete and Tampa Bay haven't caught up with that. And so the market is driving a lot of folks to move out to other areas, you know, Manatee County, Hillsborough, you know, more remote areas. I've had that in my family. What we're focusing on is, again, that 80 percent and below. That's where we put our funding. A lot of our CRA funding, that South St. Pete CRA funding, we put $12 million into um, affordable apartments just last year to make those affordable. And so we're going to continue to focus on that. Our overall plan has about 8,000 units of affordable and workforce housing. Again, um, for those folks, those folks who make average salaries here, uh, 8,000 units by 2030, and we're chipping away at that. Again, not enough to fill the need, but every one of those units is subsidized from $30,000 to $50,000 or more. We have to put in a subsidy to offset what the market is driving yeah. in terms of price. Mm -hmm. And so we're focused on it. Um, it's not a problem unique to St. Pete. In, in fact, every major city listen, in the United right. States has that problem. <laughs> exactly. Right? Right. So we've, we've got a plan. We've been, you, you, and that's, you said we, the yeah. key word, you have a plan. We have a plan and we've been de devoting resources. Just went to a groundbreaking early this week, Whispering Pines on 54th Avenue South, 20 units, mm -hmm. uh, uh, working with Boley. Right. And they all take partnerships. So Boley, the State Housing Finance Corporation, the Pinellas Housing Finance Corporation, the Pinellas County Commission, and the city put in $900,000 for these 20 affordable apartments, beautiful apartments right on 54th Avenue South. I talked to a mother and, and a young boy, and it's on our social media, uh, who literally is living in a motel with wow. her young man. And now she's got stable, affordable uh, apartment for him to grow up in. He's got his bunk bed and skateboards, and, and we chat a little bit. So we are making that impact. Mm -hmm. And folks say, well, it's only 20. Well, yeah, but it's 20. It was 50 around the corner at Skyway Lofts. Now Skyway Lofts 2 is, ha is going up right next to Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, it's the shores. We are making yeah. progress. Mm -hmm. um, and folks need to just take a look at what we're doing. Yeah, and it takes time. I mean, I yeah. think people also, while we can all hoot and holler about, oh, my gosh, it's not here, it's not ready. And like you said, little by little, but, like, it didn't take a day to build an empire. You know what I mean? And, and so you can't. 
we can't just sit and sulk. You know what I mean? You do have to sit down and actually see what's being done. Yeah, for sure. I heard I heard Kamala got blamed for the price of cars. Uh, it's kind of like the same thing. Yeah, you know, it's a bigger issue mm -hmm. than, than just what the city can address. Now, on another um, topic, but it's associated. You know, the the issue of guns and violent crime mm -hmm. in our community. You know, we had a 14 year old arrested for killing an 11 year old. An 11 year old, it's terrible. And I was at a meeting with faith leaders uh, yesterday and it was so sad because we had to say which 14 year old. My because God. there was another 14 year old a few months ago My goodness. that killed a young person. And so it's easy to say, what's the city doing about that? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's more than the city. Yeah. Do you know where your kids are? Do you know if they have a gun? Uh, if you're a gun owner, are you locking your cars? Because a lot of these kids are getting guns out of unlocked cars. They just go and try the latch and one out of 10 of those cars is open and another percentage of those cars has a gun and that's how the kids are getting the guns. And so we all have to do a part of this uh, to move forward, whether it's housing or making our communities more safe, we all have a responsibility and, and have to be accountable. Uh, let's not just look at the government and say, you fix this. No, I can't fix a kid's heart. We're trying to fix why a kid would make a choice to pick up a gun versus going to this this job, and, and by the way, we've created jobs for young people through our mayor, mayor's future ready workforce, mm -hmm. where we went out and said, look, we need um, folks to work in public works, in parks and rec and sanitation. Let's create a program that gives them training one day a week at Pinellas Technical College in public works, in give them a job right away mm -hmm. with uh, $15 an hour and benefits, and then give them an opportunity after the 18 weeks to be hired full time with the city. That's 12 amazing. students started that, nine graduated, three with their CDLs, and we've hired six full-time into the city. Hmm. And we're on our second cohort already. Come so on, we're let's working, go. we're working on an opportunity. We're putting in that work. We're, we're doing that. <laughs> and so let's talk about what we all can do together. Yeah, absolutely. Let's check in with some of our questions from people in our community. Terrence, who we got coming up? We have Jim Harold here. How do you ensure the black community will accept, will be accepted into and granted the new housing that's supposed to be coming? Mayor? Well, the housing is, is, again, we are focusing on affordable housing based on your income. Uh, we also are focusing on job opportunities, economic development opportunities, specifically for black businesses. That's part of the RFP. And so there's a $50 million community benefits package. Part of that is rebuilding that black business infrastructure, rebuilding capacity that was destroyed basically when Folks were told to move yeah, to a different to location. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so all those things are in the package. We'll be working with, with local community partners to make that happen. St. Um, Pinellas Technical College is a good example of how we've already worked with them on the mayor's future ready workforce. And so we focused on that, uh, making sure folks have access to jobs. There's a $500 million uh, set aside for black businesses in this package. It's a $6.5 billion um, development overall. 500 million is set aside. Um, for um, for black businesses. We've just implemented our MWBE program on top of that Wow! with the city. Apprenticeships, despite what the state legislature did, <laughs> because this is a voluntary agreement, apprenticeships, um, disadvantaged workers are included uh, in okay. our agreements with Heinz Rays. And so there are a lot of ways that folks are going to be able to participate in this and be a part of the economic inclusion going forward. I mean, that's huge. And I think when you look at the scope of this project, it's massive. It's, this is the largest project, development project in Tampa Bay history. Yeah, no pressure right? there, right? No, no pressure. You <laughs> yeah. got this. And so when, when we look at the breakdown, um, and, and we have a graphic, when we look at the breakdown of what's being contributed, I mean, I know a lot of people look at the numbers. They're big numbers, right? And, and, and that's understandable. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I know there's also within this, so we have St. Pete contributing 287.5 million, Pinellas County, 312.5 million. Correct me if I'm wrong. The rest of that is being um, contributed from Heinz. Is that correct? Yes. From, okay. From Heinz Rays. Okay. Now that's on the stadium part of it. Correct. There's another 130 million or so that we are contributing to infrastructure. Okay. You know, the pipes, the roads, yep. the streets, and the other 60 acres. But again, um, their contribution from Heinz Rays is more than half of the stadium okay. uh, price. The Pinellas County, and, and this is another thing folks talk about, well, there are a lot of fa false choices, and I don't want to focus too much on the negatives because we mm -hmm. had so much broad 
support. Oh, for sure. The polling showed yeah. it. The polling showed a 15 point gap in support versus opposition. Yeah. When I'm out in the street or in church, I'm hearing folks say, Mo- "Keep moving forward. Let's get this done. It's That's been good. too long." So, but folks will say you could spend, you could end child hunger. I heard you know, <laughs> an elected official say, "Yeah, you could end child hunger." So, look, these dollars from the Pinellas County, the 312.5 million, can't be used for for any of that. Mm-hmm. It's state uh, hotel tax. It, it, okay. It's, it's hotel stat tax that can only be used by state law mm-hmm. for tourism related expenses. So beach renourishment, it's been used for stadiums, been used for the Phillies, for the Blue Jays in Pinellas County. It can't be used for police and fire or housing. And okay. so it, that's off the table. The, the 287.5 million from the city, what we get in return for that is you look at that 87 acres, 86 acres, Yeah. that's asphalt now. There's nothing happening there. Mm -hmm. We're turning 60 acres of that into uh, facilities, into businesses that will employ folks. There's employment in the construction, and then they're going to contribute property taxes way over a billion dollars over 30 years, not only to St. Pete, but to uh, the county, to JWB, to the PSTA. Any uh, ad valorem taxing authority is is going to get the benefit of us developing that land. I mean, the jobs aspect is huge. It, it's absolutely huge. I mean, 30,000 jobs over the next two decades, that if, that's massive. And we are setting up, again, that workforce prep part so that folks mm-hmm. can get trained, just like we did for the Mayor's Future Ready Academy, trained for those jobs that are coming. So there really should be no excuse for folks not to be able to get a job, mm-hmm. not only that, but rebuilding that black business infrastructure. There's some yeah. exciting things that we're looking at to help kind of build that, you know, uh, capacity building for black businesses. I was just Um, about to ask, how do we ensure that black businesses are incorporated within those jobs and that we have a big minority base of employers who will get those jobs? Well, that's the other part of that. So we're working on that. Aside from the historic gas plan, we also passed a um, minority women-owned business enterprise ordinance with Mm -hmm. the city. So that is moving forward. And there's already capacity building happening under that. We just had an event called St. Pete Build last week at the Coliseum to get folks in, working uh, not only with the city, but the county has done uh, small business capacity building as well. So we're working with them. Again, there's a uh, 10% is the target for minority business inclusion. The goal is 30%. Okay. And the only way we get anywhere near that 30% is to build up the businesses we we have here. I mean, folks throughout the Southeast and really the United States are looking for ways to get in on this. Yeah, We want to build up our own businesses and get them up to capacity so they can participate in this economic development. Mayor, I'm going to jump in here because that was part of the question, too, that we had that we asked from Shannon. And Shannon asked, how is the city contractually obligating the raise and making sure minority businesses get a stake in in the actual raise and real estate development there. So the second half of what you just mm-hmm. um, the question is about the real estate development. Okay, I'm not sure what she means by a stake in the real estate development. What we have worked for is making sure that there are intentional ways for black businesses to participate in the construction and the operation uh, of that development going forward. We are looking at ways that we can ensure access, particularly for retail, that's mm-hmm. affordable because what we're seeing is as the, uh, the price of commercial real estate goes up, a lot of businesses are being driven out. And so we're looking at how do we maintain a, a low or reasonable cost um, set of facilities for businesses to use, whether it's incubator space or permanent space. And we're doing that really through our own economic development department. We also want to talk to the Rays about doing that as well through their, their retail plaza, which is in the first phase uh, of the development. But um, that's been our focus to make sure that black businesses have access to the, to the construction, to the retail, those things that are coming, of course, the jobs as well. I think the biggest thing here, when we really just take a step back, right, and we look at the scope of this massive project Mm -hmm. that honestly, like you said, providing so much to a community that was kind of stripped away of a lot of things 40 years ago, right? The accountability aspect. And I think it it goes back to what you said earlier. People can say in child hunger, but then they want to sit back and not do a thing and help the government, right? So how do the people of St. Pete or of Pinellas County as a whole hold 
leaders and 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 hold leaders accountable but also become a part of the solution so when we're talking about all of these amazing programs and all of these incredible things that are going to be coming Mm -hmm. how do they make sure and and hold people accountable hold leaders accountable but then also become a part of the solution so one of the things i focused on is working on a a dashboard so that folks can see you know the progress the progress, but also what the targets are. Okay. We have focused on being inclusive and in touch. So those are part of our, the principles. Yeah. So that's why we have Word with Welch, <laughs> which is <laughs> what I just referred to yep. our meeting with faith leaders, but we met, meet with folks occasionally on that. We have City Hall on tour where we're out in the community, actually at rec centers uh, where we meet with the community. They can come to that and ask us questions. Um, we also have community conversations, and that was – really the first uh, four meetings I talked about that we held before the RFP was even yep. issued. So we try to make sure folks have every way to in- engage, not not only with the mayor's office, but with city council and with our staff as well. Uh, the other thing is, um, and I know folks, if you're not a, a policy wonk, you aren't reading all these documents. But there of were, course they're not. There were 12 agreements. <laughs> There were 12 agreements. I threw them in the, in the AI just to do a count, and AI came back with more than 200,000 words. Wow. And so these are not just promises like in 1978. These are agreements okay. with minimum t- targets for uh, the community benefits, for the hiring. Uh, the $50 million is delineated, $15 million in community benefits, $15 million for affordable housing, all the other um, ways to rebuild the black business community. There, there's dollars for youth engagement in there. Mm-hmm. And so all these things are documented. These are agreements, legal agreements, binding agreements, which is much different than we had in 78, which is just a promise. If you move, you'll get jobs and, and opportunities. This yeah. is documented. But folks need to stay engaged. When you, when you look at the diversity of the support for this, mm-hmm. from the NAACP to the Police Benevolent Association <laughs> to... That's telling. To Jeff, to <laughs> Jeff Vinnick, to the mayors of St. Pete, Clearwater, uh, and, and uh, Tampa. Tampa. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a diverse group of folks, small businesses. Yeah. The descendants of the gas plant is very important. Gwen Reese, who's an historian uh, in, in St. Petersburg, uh, the Max, folks that walk those streets, grew up there, uh, are supportive of this, yeah. much more so than, than, the, uh, than the opponents. And so they understand our goals, they understand the promises we're making now. And and I get the feeling that folks wanted to get, well, here's an agreement that solves everything from the last 50 years. It's set and forget. No, yeah. you always gotta be involved yeah. because the next mayor, uh, the next governor might put something in place to try to stop that from happening. We, you know, There have been efforts to try to stop history from being told, right? That's right. So you've always got to stay engaged. Mm -hmm. you got to teach your your children to be engaged in the process. Elections matter. There's an election happening right now for St. Pete City Council. Early voting is open. Yep. You've got to ask the folks that are running, what will you do to make sure this happens? And then you have to stay engaged. Uh, One of the things we asked our faith-based leaders that we met with is to help us to, to communicate to their membership because folks are busy they're trying to put food on the table and not yeah. following all this that look there are job opportunities coming if you want to go into construction trades or landscaping or or whatever here's where the when the class is help us to get that information out yeah uh, and that's the way folks can make sure that the promises are kept hey you got to do the work too now yeah. y'all can't just keep pointing the fingers at all the leaders it to ta- do it the takes, work it takes all of us absolutely. it takes Everyone, let's go ahead and get another question in, uh, Terrence, before we head out. Here we go. This is coming from Kella, Mayor. What is one thing you would contribute to being successful in the diversity and inclusion of these major projects? Hmm. Well, the first thing we did is we threw out the old RFP when I was Mm -hmm. first elected. And we said the new RFP will be based on equitable economic inclusion going forward. The previous RFP was named the Tropicana Field RFP, so we renamed it. It was not Tropicana Field, it was the historic gas plant way before Mm -hmm. baseball was ever mentioned. So from the start, we centered this on the history of the historic gas plant. We made sure that equity was built into the RFP. We had actually four great responses to it, uh, but Heinz Ray's was the best in my view, the Sugar Hill also. 
um, embraced equity. They didn't run yeah. from it because they understand what the right thing to do based on those promises of 40 years ago is. And so it's embedded in everything that we do in this in this project. I got to ask, um, as a black man, how proud are you of yourself um, and, and of your administration and yeah. of your community? No, no, it's about purpose. Um, it is my birthday. So my mom, it is. my mom was one of the first texts this morning. No, um, if you know your history, if you uh, pick up 1619 Project, picked up, pick up Black AF history, mm. you'll, you'll see what, what real sacrifice is about. Mm -hmm. uh, folks gave up a lot more than this yeah. so that I could be in this position just to say we're going to do the right thing and to do so with freedom and uh, just knowing that in the end it's God who judges. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we're in the arena at this time in this place for a purpose. And without folks like, you know, so many folks on our staff, uh, uh, the county commission, Renee Flowers, who's another yeah. descendant of the gas plant and mm -hmm. spoke really forcefully on it. There are folks everywhere who have partnered on this. And so it's just an honor to be able to do this work at this time. Yeah, that's what, really? and, and, yeah. and that's huge, right? Yeah. And that's what, I know, I know you might not look at it that way, but it's, it's the kids, it's the young people mm -hmm. who, who do look up to you, right? And who do see themselves in you doing yeah. such incredible work that makes a difference, that goes beyond the politics. They, they see a, a, a man who grew up in an area that they're being raised in, yeah. that they're not too far from, who went to some of the same schools that they are going to or will be going to. Mm -hmm. And it means a lot, that, that representation, um, it means and it goes much further than any battle and, and any argument between people in a community. Oh, One of the things I've learned is uh, to focus on those things that are important don't focus on those things that right. are petty. Absolutely. And one of the best things that I get out of this is when I go to talk to kids at a school and some of them are like, you're the mayor? I said, <laughs> yeah. I went to Melrose. They had a, a mayor of Melrose, a young man. Oh. And I love it now when I'm asking, I always ask, okay, what do you want to do? What do you want to do when you grow up? And as you go around the room, I'm hearing more and more from young girls and boys. Mm -hmm. Not I want to be mayor. It's like I want to be president. Period. I, I want to own my own company. That's and amazing. So that's the one piece that I take away just being able to say, look, you can do anything you want to do. Don't be limited in your thinking. Right. Wow. Yeah. Well, for those of you who are just tuning in and um, or watching or, or listening on, on one of our many streams, we're here with Mayor Ken Welch, who's the um, mayor of St. Pete. Um, this guy is talking about the uh, development of St. Pete, um, mm -hmm. the, the history of the gas plant district. He's not someone who was just a, a transplant. He was someone <laughs> who has roots, deep roots yeah. to the community. So everything that's come out of his mouth, if you're listening up to this point, has been just facts, truth, and from the heart, most of all. Yeah. From the heart. That's real. He, is it fair to say he's rooted in progress? He is definitely the example of rooted in progress. I to 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 come, there we there go. We go. Shut, yes. Come on, um, I I want to end this off because we also have to play a little game with you because I'll uh -oh. say your birthday. Um, what do people need to look forward to moving forward with with this project? Like we said, a massive, huge project that's on you right now. Yeah. What, what comes next for the community? So what we're playing is is to try to make sure it's as transparent as possible. Okay. And to me, that means it's something that's accessible uh, on, on a mobile phone, you know, that folks can see easily the opportunities that are coming. Uh, we want to build up our partnerships, whether it's faith-based organizations, D9, you name it, community mm -hmm. organizations, to get the information out about the opportunities that are coming. First for the job training, the workforce training, the business capacity building. Mm -hmm. Those are the first things you're going to see as we start, you know, turning dirt next year. Yeah. And so just uh, there's also a community benefits portion of this uh, as well, that $50 million. And so just keep your ears out through your circle, your church, your, 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 um, your neighborhood, your family, because we're going to be pushing that information out and we're trying to build that partnership, that coalition of folks in the community to help us get that information out. There's your homework, folks. Yeah. We got another question? No, we do not have a question. We have a statement. Here we have we a statement. We do. Uh -oh. Here we go. Let me put What's the statement? Up. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> From Danny White. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mayor Ken Welch. You're doing a stellar job. And Danny's a Leo, too, I thought I saw. So happy birthday to you, Danny. Oh, 
Danny. <laughs> I love that. I want to play. So we, we play this game, especially when we have elected officials. And I always say this. We want to get to know you. We okay. don't want to know Mayor Welch. Okay. We want to know Ken. Be careful. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> be careful we got to be careful. Well, first we got to start off. I mean, you oh, yeah. wanted a bruz. You're a, a, well, you're a, a wonderful in, man of I Omega Sci Fi fraternity. And I just brought in my hat from the conclave. The Rays are just <laughs> killing it. Come on. And then this, of course, we have Rattler Night this Saturday. Y'all, y'all Wildcats don't Let's hate. Oh. But that's this Saturday. Come and on, so, Wildcats. Love the way the Rays are working there. Yeah. Shout out to to the men of Omega Sci-Fi. So let's 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 take this thing on back. So where where do you hang out when you try to escape and don't you don't want to run into nobody? You don't want to see nobody. Where do you go? What do you do? It's a Harley Davidson name symbol. Uh, uh, 2022 Row King special. You ride a Harley? Yeah. Davidson? Yeah. Let's go, oh, man. Yeah. Oh. I'm talking about Ken. And, excuse me. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. What? So, Is yeah. this like a weekend thing? It's whenever, like, it's been so hot lately. It's yeah, tough. Yeah, it is really but hot. But it's whenever I can sneak in. Yeah. Okay. 30 minutes. You, are you by yourself? Do you ride by yourself or do you have like a group by of guys? By myself, but or? then there's some special rides like the St. Pete Fools. Yeah. Yeah. is an organization that does a lot of great charity work. Uh -huh. And they have a ride coming up. And uh, we do, you know, Skyway Bridge all around the county. It's escorted. Cut it so out. I do, oh, yeah. I do those kind of rides. but you nice. probably be next to people and they don't even know it's you. With your helmet on and be riding now, huh? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, that. Yeah. So my question to you, Mary, my ne the next question is, what is one of your... Now, now St. Pete has oh, a plethora of, of restaurants. Amazing oh, restaurants. That's true. What is your go-to favorite restaurant in, in St. Pete? Pete? Oh. Or Tampa area? Oh. oh. Or any surrounding counties? Oh, that's good. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let me choose carefully. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's really too complicated. Um, Are you a give, foodie? Give us one for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's no, fair. Man, it's complicated. So I was just at Park Shore Grill for a business meeting. That's always okay. a good okay. one. Okay. 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 But our family loves to hang out at uh, Chatterways. If you haven't heard Chatterways. about Chatterways, yeah, you got to check it out. Okay. Okay. Um, but there's where so is that? South St. Pete. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Chatterways. Chatterways. Yeah. Chatterways. Yeah. Okay. That's on the radar. All so right. then, do you drink? Oh uh, yeah. So what's the favorite drink? Well, I am an Omega, so. <laughs> Wait. Bourbon whiskey. Let's go. Bourbon whiskey. Bourbon. Yeah. Ugh. Whiskey comes with. <laughs> Am I hey. answering the questions or asking? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> only, what? only on occasion. Only on occasion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not bad. A little whiskey. Okay. We need. We should. We should have had some whiskey. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> For the birthday. We oh should yeah. If, have. It's, if it was wrapped, yeah, I could take it back with me. But, oh yeah. So that means you got to come sure. back, Mayor. I mean, you got to come back, and we to. have to if give you. We can you, avoid the hurricanes, we'll and you know everything else that happens every yeah. time we try to book. I but. know, I know, but we appreciate you. Thank you for, for uh, giving us an opportunity to talk about this. It's, of course, it's, um, it's good to get information out and facts mm -hmm. rather than just feelings right. on this. Yeah, and I'm uh, so excited about where we are uh, as a city and and the really support we've had around Tampa Bay on this. Well, let me say, you are doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. Um, thank you for everything that you do for the entire community um, and, and the people. And I, I think what's real about you, not even I think, I know what's real about you. We weren't even 10 minutes into this, this podcast, and it was, I'll meet with you. If you have a question, right. here's yep. my email address. Here's how you can contact me. Like, that's real. And we and well, we don't hear that. But we also see that from you. We see you doing that in the community. So we appreciate all of your work. Good to be here. We Thank know you it's so your birthday. We're going to let you go. <laughs> all right. And have an incredible time today. We honor you. We appreciate you. We'll see you soon. Thanks for having me. I Thank appreciate you for it. Being here, Mayor. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks for hanging with us, everybody. Rooted in Progress. We are back. We are live every day at 11. Hopefully you enjoyed this stream. Hopefully you learned something. And hopefully you're going to do something right because i think that is one of our biggest takeaways is that our our local leaders they can't do it by themselves right. um we have to be a part of the action and we can't sit back and hear one little soundbite or read one little article and and take it and run with it right absolutely absolutely and even this one little interview um like you said i mean most interviews are two three minutes long if that <laughs> so we asked you to get involved go to these meetings stand up be you have a voice yeah speak out Use it. let it be heard 
And this is the reason why Deanna, excuse me, I'm sorry, Deanne and I do what we do. I'm getting do. off this stream. We got, we have too I'm many, about to go. We have too I, many nope, Deannas don't even, They don't need to hear it because this, at this point, this don't. Building. you need to stop. At this point, just cut it out. Uh, hey, y'all, Rooted in Progress, we're here every Thursday, every Thursday. at 11 a.m. Make sure you add us and follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. I'm your host, Deanne. There's no A at the end of my name. Ooh, Deanne ooh. King, we will see you back here next Thursday. Y'all stay rooted. All right, stay rooted, folks.